We're continuing with the application of IFRS 15, Revenue Recognition, to Green Inc., of course. I'm going to move the page down. Perfect. Let's move forward with the entries. First, on April 2nd, what did the company get? The legal right to collect cash from their customer, BJB. Debit accounts receivable for $2,880. Notice we're doing the full amount because that's what you're actually charging your client on your invoice. Credit sales revenue. As per our analysis, we can only recognize $2,649.60 after the estimate for the right of return is removed. So where is the difference going to go? It's going to go into a liability account called refund liability. $230.40. This refund liability is a recognition that if the customer returns product to us, we have a legal obligation to return their money to them. Or give them a credit, of course, on the accounts receivable. This is not an unearned revenue account. An unearned revenue account only exists when the customer has paid us cash in advance. Instead, this is a liability account that recognizes that 8% of all products sold are returned, in which case we have to provide a credit to the customer. Remember that we have to match the expense to the revenue to help to generate, so I have to recognize a cost of sales but the cost of sales also has to take into account the possible return of the inventory. Therefore, on April 2nd, I will do a debit to cost of goods sold. Let's do the calculation on the right-hand side. 24 boxes multiplied times the $80 that it cost us to buy these boxes is equal to $1,920. However, we estimate that 8% of this is going to be returned. So I cannot recognize 100% of the cost of goods sold when I'm only recognizing 92% of the sales revenue. I have to recognize only 92% of the cost of goods sold. So I'm going to take the $1,920, multiply it times 92%, which is the 100% minus the 8. So we will recognize an expense of only $1,766.40. The difference that's going to be a right of return asset to recognize that this inventory might come back to us. So remember, I debit cost of goods sold for the lower amount of $1,766.40 because it's got to be matched to the sales revenue, which is also recognized only at 92%. I'm going to credit inventory for the full amount that I've withdrawn from the inventory, which is $1,920. The difference has to go into an asset account which recognizes that this inventory may come back to me, and that's a debit to the right of return asset, $153.60. Now the entry balances. Page down. Fast forward to May 30th when BJB returns one box of the wood flooring. What did the company get? Well, they reduce their liability because they no longer owe a full refund for 8%. What else disappears? Well, they get back the accounts receivable because they no longer have a legal right to collect from BJB for the full amount because BJB returned one box. Notice if you did a T account for your refund liability, your refund liability would be reduced by $120. We no longer have a liability for a returned good because it has been returned. What else do we have to recognize? Well, we have to recognize that inventory has come back. And what's disappeared? The right of return asset. It's reduced because one box has been returned. Now, fast forward to July 2nd, which is the end of the right of return policy. Because this is the end of the 90 days right of return policy period, BJB can no longer return any further product to Green Inc. So Green Inc. can recognize the remainder of the amount in the refund liability account as sales revenue. They can also recognize that no further inventory will come back, so the right of return asset is going to disappear and become a cost of goods sold expense. Let's just see how much I have in my refund liability. 
$230.40 minus the $120 is equal to 110.40. Perfect. What can we now recognize? The sales revenue. $110.40. What else has to disappear? The right of return asset, because we have now definitely sold all the remaining product. How much would that be? Well, we got to calculate it. $153.60 is how much was in the account originally. But we had a return on May 30th worth $80. So that means that the only amount remaining in the right of return asset is $73.60. Note that by the end of the right of return period, all of the revenue for the boxes that can no longer be returned has to be recognized as well as the related expense cost of goods sold. What about when BJB actually pays? Well, that's fairly easy. We would look only at the accounts receivable account and see what their outstanding balance is and we'd require them to pay the balance that remains. Let's move on to part B. What if there is no historical information about returns or returns have been volatile due to an economic downturn, so it's not possible to predict the level of returns with any certainty? You would think that if we have uncertainty with regards to the level of returns, it would have to be true that Green Inc. would recognize no revenue at all. But there must be extreme uncertainty for Green Inc. to not recognize revenue. Even if the number of returns was volatile or there was no specific historical information about returns for this product, Green Inc. would be expected to make a conservative estimate of what the returns are expected to be and the revenue should be recognized appropriately in a conservative manner. It is not an option to recognize zero revenue. The company is expected to use their professional judgment to make an estimate with regards to returns. If they have uncertainty, then their estimate should recognize that by being more conservative. An example of revenue recognition with a right of return. $1,000.